In western Lake Erie, huge algae blooms have become a perennial problem, and the effects can be severe. But efforts are underway to restore lost wetlands and shrink or prevent future blooms. From Toledo, partner station WGTE brings us the story. The harmful algal bloom of 2014 left 500,000 people in the Toledo area without drinking water for three days. Without warning, the water coming out of the faucets and shower heads for more than a half a million people was unusable, even for washing or brushing teeth. Shelves in local grocery stores were ransacked, and people went out of the region in droves searching for water. Although the water has since been deemed drinkable, the harmful algal bloom returns every year. In 2019, the algal bloom grew to 620 square miles by mid-August. Its major cause, as we now know, is excessive nutrient runoff, mainly phosphorus and nitrogen from agriculture fields or wastewater. But the story of this modern crisis goes back tens of thousands of years. Meet Clint Mock, a local author and historian of the Northwest Ohio region. If you go back in time, I mean way back, this area was covered by two miles of glacial ice. And when it finally melted, oceans rose back up to the levels that we know them today and left a lot of strange things, and uh, including the Great Lakes. Beside the Great Lakes uh, was this place called the Great Black Swamp. But it was an absolute terrifying wilderness that blocked out this whole section of Northwest Ohio. Water and soft mud and you couldn't drive a wagon through it and the horses would get stuck up to their bellies in soft mud. The Great Black Swamp was a nuisance. So starting in the mid 1800s, Almost a million acres of it were drained to create productive farmland. In a few decades, the region was transformed. The remnants are ditches. I mean, Wood County still got 3,000 miles of ditches that they maintain. Thousands of miles of ditches to get the water out, which eventually, of course, gathered through here and there and ended up in Lake Erie, which it still does today. And that's part of the problem. When the Great Black Swamp was drained, the watershed lost a valuable filter, and the fertilizer used on Northwest Ohio farms had a straighter shot into Lake Erie. Today, four and a half million acres of agricultural land drain into the Maumee River and then into Lake Erie. The runoff contains nitrogen and phosphorus, and when those nutrients reach high concentrations in the lake, they don't feed crops. They feed a type of harmful bacteria called microcystis, and that's what caused the 2014 water crisis. Todd Crail is a lecturer of environmental sciences at the University of Toledo. In 2014, we woke up uh, in August one morning and we were told we couldn't drink our water. The reason we couldn't drink the water is because of microcystis. And under certain conditions, the microcystis will become extremely abundant in certain circumstances produces a lot of toxin called microcystin which will wreck your liver with a very small concentration in parts per billion. With his students, Crail conducts field research, propagating native plants on the campus grounds and in city roundabouts. Their goal is to rebuild the natural filter of the black swamp one plot at a time, thereby reducing the amount of nutrient runoff feeding the algae bloom. Wetlands are important in Ohio uh, because they are what I call the liver of the landscape. When you have a healthy amount of wetlands, they will fix any changes, they'll help balance the load, they'll help make things livable. Uh, the nitrogen goes into a wetland and if the conditions are right, particularly having water in the summertime, uh, we begin a process called denitrification that will convert uh, nitrate or ammonia uh, molecules of nitrogen into nitrogen gas and send them off into the atmospheric pool, which uh, disallows these blooms to happen. Ohio farmers have worked to reduce fertilizer runoff, but it's still a problem, especially during years with heavy rainfall. 
To fight the algal blooms, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has called for a 40% reduction in total phosphorus entering the lake through the Maumee River. The region's biggest obstacle? The century-old drainage system that turned the Black Swamp from a natural water filter into an agricultural powerhouse. Of course, the region needs productive farms and a healthy lake. So farmers and conservationists from the Black Swamp Conservancy and the Nature Conservancy are turning key plots of land back into wetlands. The Black Swamp Conservancy is a land trust. Um, our mission is to protect natural habitats and um, family farms for the benefit of future generations. So we protected over 17,500 acres in a 16 county area here in Northwest Ohio. That includes family farms. It also includes wetlands, um, prairies, savanna habitats. Um, the other thing we do is wetland restoration. And we've really been doing that in earnest for about the last six or seven years, uh, where we're selecting areas um, very strategically to have an impact on wildlife species and water quality, and returning them to, um, to wetland habitats. You know, if we were to restore 1% back, uh, we would see a lot more of what we call ecosystem service or ecosystem function, uh, where those wetlands would have an opportunity to treat water before it gets into the Maumee River and eventually Lake Erie. And it would certainly help to curtail the, um, the toxic algal bloom issues we've been having. We're trying to find public money to uh, do restoration projects, to protect land and to restore it. We work with uh, the partners uh, at all the other conservation groups, whether it's the DNR, or the Toledo Metro Parks, or Olander Park System, who are the local um, conservation entities, so that we can all do things a little more efficiently. We do prescribed burning out in our natural areas to revitalize our prairies and savannas and uh, we're collecting native seeds and propagating those because we have such small remnants of our habitat left that uh, you know finding the proper species to put back out on the landscape uh, as we're reclaiming it has been really difficult so um, we work together on that uh, we're removing invasive species uh, a lot of invasive plant species that will take over the landscape at the exclusion of all our rare native plants and animals. I think it is important to look back at our history and um, to look at the engineering feats that we accomplished. Uh, we've gone to the moon, we've built skyscrapers. Um, and it's through that intelligence and it's through that capacity that we are going to be able to restore our natural systems and to live uh, and to coexist with the natural community. For more on these stories and the Great Lakes in general, visit greatlakesnow.org. When you get there, please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter. See you out on the lakes.